Hi guys, this is John Frelst with TopspinTennis.com. Today I am doing a uh, forehand analysis on Roger Federer. I think he has probably the most efficient and simplistic forehand of all time, and uh, it's the reason why he's won so many Grand Slams. Uh, currently he's in the contact point. I'm going to go ahead and take the video back, and uh, I'm just going to break down the stroke, show you some of the things that I really like, and... Um, Maybe you can implement, uh, you know, one or two of these things into your game. First of all, let's look at the uh, the grip. Federer is in a uh, like a strong Eastern grip. Currently, right here, he's in a continental grip, but um, he will uh, he will transition over to the Eastern grip. The reason why that grip is so important is that. Uh, with an eastern grip, you're able to drive the ball really well, yet you can still impart topspin. Uh, so he's changed that grip. Let's go ahead and start looking at the, the tracking phase. This is where he sees the incoming ball after the split step and then transitions to the right side of his body. Federer does have um, a loop on his forehand, and if you're not using a loop, you want to do that. And the way I, you know, tell my students to 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 implement the loop is just try to make that letter C with the with the racket. So if you watch, you know, it starts high, comes down low, and then goes through the ball. So that letter C is a great way to kind of visualize, um, you know, generating that loop. The other way to do it is just pretend you're making a candy cane. with the racket. Another great little visual uh, for you to think about. All right, so he's got the Eastern grip, transitions to the side, he's tracking the ball. Notice how he doesn't take the racket back right away. Racket, um, you know, the hands are to the side. I mean, basically all he's done is taken a unit turn where he's turned his shoulders. See how the hands are real quiet here? They don't really do much. It's just a little rotation to the side. The other thing I want you to see here is, let's look at the, the hand. Look at how relaxed he is. I mean, his hand is, you can just see how his fingers are just lightly um, um, supporting the neck of the racket. That just right there, that just tells you how loose he is. One other thing with the grip, too, is just notice how he doesn't have a real, like a substantial... Uh, trigger finger. See how that that his index finger. There's a slight gap between his index finger and um, his middle finger. It's almost like a hammer grip. Uh, so that I think is another reason why he's able to gen get so much lag and snap on his forehand. All right, let's take. Uh, so we're he's turned sideways. He's tracking. Um, notice how. The one thing I want you to keep in mind here is he has a loop, but notice how go here and here. Notice how his hitting hand never gets above his shoulder. So we'll go ahead and take the video. Notice how in both videos, how the hitting hand never gets above the shoulder. This is another reason why I think his stroke is, is so efficient. I think the larger the loop, the more moving parts, the, the, the easier it is for things to break down. And uh, we see that a lot with, with players where that hand just gets too high and then you start running into issues, especially if you're playing against somebody with a, with a power game and you might be late and then you've got to rush things and, and things break down. So keep that hand below the shoulders. Notice in this position, too, in both videos, how the racket head is still in front of the hands. So that's where he's going to generate that leg. He's not taking that racket head back too far, uh, you know, behind the hand too soon. One other thing here is I just love his balance. I'm going to put a line right above his head. You almost want to imagine that when you're, when you're pursuing that ball that you're balancing a book on your head. Uh, in every sport, when you're moving, if you if you can keep your head over your shoulders and over your feet, that balance is just gonna it's gonna uh, make things a lot easier and improve your chances of success. All right, so here we go. He's 
Let's go in the uh, the racket starting to drop here. Look at this position here. I really like this. Notice how the racket angle is closed. <clears throat> and it's actually pointing away. And the reason why I like this position is by closing that racket angle, he's going to generate more topspin. And the other thing that this does is by closing that face, I don't know if you guys know this, but it does relax the rotator cuff, the shoulder, the, that area that encapsulates, um, it's the shoulder muscles. And uh, closing that racket face, you have less tension on that shoulder. Once again, he's very efficient, very relaxed. Let's look at the drop here. So notice again how that racket face is pointing down. One thing too here, I want to take it back a little bit, this position right here. Look at the non-hitting arm, how it is extended out to the side. Now, a couple ways to work on this. Um, one, just visualize yourself, like a, visualize a waiter and how they have, uh, they'll have a towel over this arm. And that's the position you should be able to um, keep that arm extended to the side and just visualize that you have a towel over that arm. A lot of times you'll see people, this, this arm will be pointing down or the elbow will be bent into the body. Not a good position. He's very balanced. And the other thing he's able to do with this is he's able to work on his spacing. He doesn't let that ball get too close to his body. Notice the loading in the legs. So he is using his legs, but he doesn't, um, if you watch him, he doesn't uh, over uh, bend, if that's the right terminology. But I think sometimes kids use their legs too much and then they lose power as well. Or kids don't use their legs enough and they're losing power. So he seems to have that nice blend of knee bend and, and rotation. All right, so let's go ahead and go, here's that leg the racket leg. And the only reason, the only way you're going to really get this is if you look at Federer here in both videos, there's just not a lot of tension in the arm and in the fingers. He's very, very relaxed here. And by doing that, if you don't have a lot of um, grip tension, then that racket will work for you a lot better. So here's that leg. That racket will lay back for him nicely here. And there's the contact point. All right. Contact point's beautiful. He's finding that ball off that front foot. See where he's finding it. Uh, so he does a nice job there. The other thing I want you to realize, no, notice, is look at his stances in, in, um, in this video. He's in a like a closed square stance, and in this one, he's in a semi-open stance. Don't uh, I think sometimes we overthink these stances. Uh, Federer will use the stance that is ideal for the incoming ball, so it, it, it's always changing. Um, the game is getting quicker. You're going to probably see more more open stance, more semi-open stance. But he is finding that ball out in front. The other thing that I like with Federer is just notice how the racket head is laid back behind the hand. And by doing that, he's almost hitting like the inside of the ball. Uh, here's a, I mean, once again, this is a great example. Look at how that racket head is leg, laying back behind the ball. It's almost like he's hitting the inside of the ball. And by doing that, especially on his inside out forehand, he's able to generate more power because really he's got a, he's got a power angle here with that arm and racket, more leverage, more power. All right, this is what Federer is really known for. Just notice how he's keeping that chin down. I mean, the ball was here and he's still staying with that ball. Same thing in this video. He's got his head down and uh, the chin comes right to his shoulder. The chin will come right to the shoulder on the follow through. It's so important. If you're a golfer, you need to be doing the same thing. After you hit the ball, keep that chin down towards that contact point. You, Federer knows where he's going to hit this ball. He doesn't need to look up to see where it's going. I'll right, we'll take it back a little bit again. Look at the extension. Uh, 
Federer does extend his his hitting arm, but he doesn't overextend. I think sometimes people will you've you've heard like point that racket out to the target. When you do that, you become disconnected. But notice Federer how he'll he does go to he'll go out, but then immediately watch how he pulls across his body and finishes right between the elbow and the shoulder. I've seen that a lot. I've seen a lot. I've watched hours and hours of Federer video. And if you watch him, he'll finish a lot between the elbow and the shoulder. Uh, look at the rotation. Love the fact that he's transferred his weight. Notice how that back foot's come off the ground. Um, now his shoulder, if you watch his bot, his um his chest, how it's pointing towards the camera. So he's really uh, used his hips and shoulders to rotate on the ball. All right, I hope this helps. Uh, if you like the video, please hit the like button before. If you really like the video, share this with your friends, your students, your coaches. I, I really, really believe that um, when we emulate the, the best, most efficient, it, it can only help our game. Thanks a lot for visiting.